Oh, this one does scare me. Inside is almost just pasty. I think you need a spoon to eat it. Every culture and every chef interprets ingredients differently, oh. especially when it comes to seafood. Is that ice or slime? <laughs> oh! <laughs> Last time, we were introduced to the flatfish. Is he looking at me or looking at you? Prepared two different ways. I've never seen this done in person. By a Japanese chef, then by a Vietnamese chef. Mm. Oily, greasy, fatty. Sorry, I was describing myself. Today, we're back at it. I want to see how two chefs from opposite sides of the world prepare the exact same fish. From the top, it does look a lot like a shark. And the way to retrieve it is to hook it. So he's... <laughs> <laughs> Good contribution. One ingredient. He's combining land creatures with sea creatures. Two vastly different styles. This is just like a potluck of fortune or misfortune. You have no idea. But first, let's meet our meat. This is Phu Wong, the biggest island in Vietnam, blessed with balmy weather, evergreen forests, mountains, and perfect sandy beaches. Southwest of the mainland, it's the perfect escape from some of Vietnam's mega cities. But the best part, by far, the seafood. Ahoy! And welcome to Phuoc Island. We've just pulled up here at this fish farm. What are we featuring today? The cobia. In the animal kingdom, there are predators and there's prey. But there's a third group, much like my old college roommate, the scavenger. Cobia. These fish are found in warm to tropical waters, usually trailing behind sharks to eat whatever they leave behind. Though sometimes they're mistaken for sharks themselves because of their large pectoral fins. The cobia is a very popular whitefish meat. Today, we're gonna see this prepared the Vietnamese way and the French way. But before we get to cooking, let's learn a little bit more about our dinner guest. Let's go. Can you help me with the boat part? Guys, look, he's networking. Here at Khe Sao Guan, a hot summer collab starring a restaurant featuring seafood trading and aquaculture. Like a farm for fish. Hi, I'm helping out. Jesus! <laughs> right here, this is loaded with grouper. Every couple months, they need to clean out these nets. Maybe there's pizza boxes, fast food containers down there. This is like an intermediary tub. They put them in here, they splash around in this green solution, and then they're gonna put those guys in a different net. Bath time, every two months, just like me. Stay fresh. They said they need my muscles and also strength. Oh, come on. Oh, I got so many. Bro, you dropped your rope. There we go, nice teamwork. So that was round one. We still have about a thousand fish left. All right, keep going. With demand for seafood higher than ever. Whoa, there's so many. Aquaculture is a lucrative way to meet customers' needs. Buy little fish fingerlings, raise them in square net cages, feed them daily, keep them clean, and that <laughs> is money in the bank. But that doesn't mean people aren't still catching fish. Fishing brings in the variety. Wow, isn't it crazy? These just come out of the ocean with rubber bands on them like that. That pollution's so bad these days. Here, they buy seafood from local fishermen, then resell them to nearby local restaurants. All right, we're pulling up a second basket. So these are mantis shrimp in here. They have these really beautiful... Don't drop it, that's inventory. Look at its eyes. It's looking at me. At this point, at you me. may be wondering, where's the cobia? Oh, they've got plenty of that. Here we have a bunch of cobia, about one month old, and she's gonna feed them right now. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, my God. They're vicious and adorable at the same time. Here, they own about 2,000 of these little dude bros, weighing around two to three pounds and munching down bait fish twice daily. This is the first net that they stay in. Eventually, they're gonna get moved to a different net as they get bigger. After eight months, they hit the ready-to-sell size of 15 pounds, but eventually, they can reach up to 100 pounds. This guy right here, from the top, it does look a lot like a shark. It's about 40 pounds, and the way to retrieve it is to hook it. I would love to see how this works. Works. He grabs a smaller bait fish, he hooks it on there, and he's gonna go for it. So, which one is foolish enough to get caught right now? Oh, shoot, <laughs> it's so quick. Oh, he lost it. He only has one fish left. All right, focus, focus. We're waiting for one of these big cobia. Oh, 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 it's he got, <laughs> he got the grouper on accident. Even though the cobia are contained, Dude, these creatures look so crazy. Retrieving one isn't as easy as you might think. He's trying to find the right positioning. There's a certain cockiness to these adults that you don't see from the kids. 
Oh, it just took it. It just took it. A real big one. So he's trying to bring it in. They're trying to corner it. And once they get it out of the water, it'll lose its its strength. But this thing is huge and powerful. Oh, he got it. Dude, look at this thing. It's big, it's beautiful, and super heavy. Oh, he's turned it into a clutch. One rope through the gill, through the mouth, and then around the tail. And now he can carry it. He's putting it on the scale. Looks like it's coming in around 17, 18 kilograms. It's a big one. The fish is hit with scalding hot water to make scaling go a lot quicker. Here it's about efficiency. Avoid wasting any food, energy, or time. The cobia's inner organs, head, gills, and fins are sectioned off and cleaned for a soon-to-come surprise. With a large fish like this, it's easier to cut a bone-in fish steak than a typical filet. Within 10 minutes, he broke the whole thing down. Super simple, super smooth. A load of these steaks, all cut roughly about an inch and a half thick, and it's ready to cook up right now. Take it away. Oh, here. This is for you, actually. So right now, she's putting it in this mixture, and it is much easier than I expected. My work here is done. Braised cobia in a blend of minced garlic, fish sauce, sugar, and MSG. How long does this take to kind of cook up? A high move? A high move? Yeah. 20 minutes. Finished up with a lot of ground pepper, chilies, and spring onion. Boom! Cobia, meal one. This is classic white meat. It breaks apart pretty easily. Let's go. Mmm. A little spicy, nice sweet glaze on there, and some savory aspect too. The fish itself, it's kind of a nice crossroads between meaty and flaky. Mmm. The skin is good. It's about what you would expect from a fish like this, but overall, bite to bite, it's gonna be tasting the same. That's why we have the hot pot with these ingredients right here. Remember all the off cuts? This one's really shocking to me. I don't know how this could possibly be good. Basically, everything that wasn't a steak is assembled on a platter Never? that will be cooked in a spicy shrimp saute broth. Oh, this looks like an egg sack. There's all types of weird goodies on here. That's kind of the fun here. Each bite's gonna be different. Some are gonna be freaky. Some might be delicious. Maybe they'll all be delicious, but I don't know. Oh, check this out. This right here, that is the gills. The gills started like this, super kind of pinkish, and then they become gray after cooking. Let's try it out. Cool, so cool. I can say it has a strange kind of bristly texture, like trying to eat your toothbrush. Oh, it makes my teeth hurt just thinking about it. It's just weird, but not bad. I swear, I think this is a fish liver. I'm gonna try it out now. Oh, super tender, soft, almost creamy. We've got some cheek here. This should be one of the more prized parts of the head. Mmm, that is delicious. Here, I've built up to this monstrosity. <laughs> oh God, it's gonna break. Look at that. What a beauty, it's so huge. It's super gooey, gelatinous, and inside is almost just pasty. Here we go. What was that? Just gooey. It's like a semi-solid gravy. On one hand, I like the fact that they're not wasting anything. On the other hand, I wish I could give this to someone else to not waste, rather than myself. It's just pure goo. I mean, is it undercooked? Is it medium rare? I don't know. I'm gonna have one more bite. Okay, smaller bite was a little bit better. Guys, when something looks intimidating and soft and gooey, don't take a bite the size of your mouth. So this is a pretty traditional, standard Vietnamese method of preparation. What I like about it is very straightforward, simple, but always delicious. From plucking that fish out of the water to getting it on your table, it's probably about 20 minutes. I mean, that's how long it takes me to get a cheeseburger at Applebee's. That's pretty wild. From here, we're going to the Marriott in their high-end kitchen to see what they do with the cobia. Next, we're heading to the Pink Pearl, a French restaurant located within the five-star JW Marriott Emerald Bay Resort. This place offers eccentric decor, along with an exquisite fine dining selection. But today, we're going off menu, challenging the chef with an entire cobia. Cobia that came from the same exact farm. We are in the kitchen right now with Chef Eric. Thank you for joining me. A pleasure. Right here, we have a big, beautiful cobia. Already, it's been scaled. When you scale it, do you pour super hot water on it? Absolutely not. I want to keep the skin and the flesh super fresh. And that process took him roughly one hour. Ooh. I like that. Born and raised in France, Eric has a strong culinary foundation. On the tail, on the head. Including 10 years experience working in Michelin star restaurants. I will not go through here. We have the stomachs and all the dirty parts. If I mess up, the flesh will be tasting like... Shit. 
Yeah, yeah you can say shit. Yeah. Okay, it would just say shit. The most popular, most typical cut in the West is the fillet. Oh, that is the first fillet. And the least popular, probably the organ. No eyeballs, no gills? Any gills? No. The cobia. Is this something you usually cook in this restaurant? Actually not. And why not? I don't like it. In Asia, people like to get chewy stuff. Mm. For us, about Westerners and French especially, we are more looking about tender things, juicy. So that's why I prefer to use some little local fish like remulet or some baramundi. So what is the challenge in using copia today? That is no challenge. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> okay. I like it. It's okay. I like the confidence. <laughs> Influenced by both French and Japanese cuisine, today, Chef Eric will serve up a four-course meal of cobia. First, the canapé. It's a ball. It's a green ball. The fish is steamed for 15 minutes, then shredded, mixed with tofu, shiitake mushroom, hedgehog mushroom, and Szechuan pepper. This is like the starter before your starter. Shape that into a ball and put it in a blast chiller at zero degrees Fahrenheit. Of course, it's just supposed to give you a taste of something and not fill you up. Dip it in fry powder, egg, and green young rice. Deep fry and serve with a Vietnamese Szechuan pepper mayonnaise. I'm gonna smear it in this mayonnaise. Wow, I'm very impressed. That is incredible. I can't even believe it came from the same fish. The dishes I ate earlier today were a little bit more meaty somehow. Through whatever magic he worked in the kitchen, that was just incredibly juicy. I love that. Feed me more. Next, the starter. Saute cobia meat in butter until golden brown. Now for plating. Add a layer of pumpkin puree, crustacean jus made of crab, lobster, and shellfish stock. On top, the cobia meat, then dried ants. Yes, you heard that correctly, dried ants. Our next course, super interesting, because he's clearly using French techniques, but plenty of local ingredients. Oh, <laughs> did I ruin it? This is a freaking amazing looking high-end meal with ants, I love that. And cobia, that's what we're here for, the fish. Delicious, smooth. The ants didn't really even have a very powerful flavor. Oy, oy, oy. You'd hardly realize there's any cobia in there. It's kind of hidden in the dish. The pumpkin, it's like this creamy binding factor that brings it all together. Of course, too. Stunning, delicious, super creative. Appetizers are down right now. The soup. The fish is diced, then seared in a hot pan. It's crazy because the cobia actually looks like little bits of tofu. It's so fine and white. Hedgehog mushroom, pan seared with butter, plate together with fermented black trumpet mushroom. I want to try this insane looking black mushroom. Oh, it has a powerful flavor. My God, it's like a shot of espresso. Serve with a mushroom broth made from dried shiitake mushrooms, turmeric, garlic, coriander, chilies, black pepper, coriander seeds, and star anise. This is a painstaking soup to make the broth alone takes a couple of days to process. I'm going to try all these elements together. Let's go for it. Mmm. Interesting. Cobia has some of that seafood essence still combined with very earthy, bold mushrooms. Interesting combination. Cool. Okay. Finally, the main course. The fish meat is seasoned with salt, then grilled over charcoal. Saute zucchini with salt and pepper. Zucchini, plate together with a celery emulsion, then the fish. Placed on top, a thin layer of pig lard. Cool. Charcoal grilled cobia, surrounded by a moat of what looks like dish soap bubbles, but I'm guessing it's more delicious than that. Oh my God. Sorry, it took my breath away. It's seductive and it's, oh, I can't think of the word people use for sweets. It's so fucking good. <laughs> just like a buttery foam with a hint of celery that just kind of melts in your mouth. Let's get into this fish. Ooh, it looks juicy, it looks beautiful. Let's try it out. Mm. This layer of lard is so interesting. It's so rich. It's something I did not expect beyond that. He's made it quite juicy. I'm not usually a fish guy, and I'm liking this. Mm. So that's it. Cobia done two ways by two different chefs, both interpreting the fish very differently. Even little aspects, the way they scale it, the way they cut it, and doing a taste comparison. The point isn't really to say one method is better than the other, but they're interesting and unique in their own way. The French chef, I really like his commitment to technique and incorporating a lot of local ingredients. The way he treated the fish, it was super delicious, moist, dynamic, interesting, and visually very appealing. I like that the Vietnamese preparation used a little bit of everything. They didn't let anything go to waste. I mean everything, and I know because I ate everything.
even that egg sac. Merch alert. This is for all you head-to-tail adventurous eaters. Always down for trying something new. No waste, more taste. Only available to the end of March. There's a couple big ones in there. Number <laughs> one. Welcome to my show. The curse of my show is now your curse, too. Fish feeding is complete. Right now, we're going to check out the rest of her place. Let's go. Who are you looking at? Yeah. <laughs> she looks at you guys the whole time. Of the courses you're making today, what makes them French? What are you doing to this fish that is... <laughs> it's a green ball. It's made with sticky rice uh, from Hanoi. It's made with glutinous young rice from Hanoi. Why is it green? It has the green color. And that's why it has the green color. Give that a dip. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a dip. You can give that a little bit of a dip. A little bit of a dip in the fizz off. <laughs> Sorry, I'm such an idiot. A little bit of dip. <laughs> Did I ruin it? Get on the dish. Oh, I feel like I'm, I'm not gonna get a buzz. Was that the point? All the smoke got away. I'm trying to get, um... oh, hi. Guys, that is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time. Peace. All right.